how to patent a name. More coming up in this video. Often people ask me how to patent a name. Then I first have to explain that patents are for technical inventions. So if you invented a new hair dryer for elephants or flying cars or something like this, then you can patent that invention with a patent. If you want to protect a name, then typically you use a trademark. So the main thing that I first have to explain is the difference between patents and trademarks. So trademarks are for protecting names and logos and slogans and nowadays even colors and three-dimensional shapes and these kinds of things. My first advice would be to ask a patent attorney or an attorney at law to help you with protecting the name because uh, they are highly experienced. But if you want to get a first glimpse of what is needed to protect a name with a trademark, then this video is for you. First of all, you want to compile the most important information needed to protect a name. And this information is basically the sign, so the name by itself, then the goods and services that you want to be protected. For example, Apple is protected for computers, or Levi's is protected for jeans or clothing. Um, so you need to specify what you want your trademark to protect, uh, what kinds of goods and services. And then, of course, you need the owner of the trademark, the information. Let's start with an example. Imagine you have a dance studio and you want to open it under the name of Marimba. Then you need the following information. First of all, the sign, which is Marimba. Then you need the goods and services that you want to protect. So, uh, for example, um, the dance instructions or dance lessons are all in uh, class 41. Or if you also want to have, let's say, um, you have a bar inside your dance studio, um, then it would be in class 43. Or all, as, as you can see, all goods and services that um, are existent are grouped into classes, 45 classes. So there's class, for example, for software and apps like class 9 or there is class 16 for all printed matter or there's all different kinds of classes. So 41 is important for you uh, if you want to uh, open a dance studio. Um, then 43 maybe for serving drinks or snacks or something. If you want uh, to basically tell other bars and, and restaurants not to use marimba, then you need protection in 43. And if you want uh, to do some retail uh, in your dance studio, let's say you want to sell shoes or clothing um, and you want uh, basically a shop or an e-commerce site under the name Marimba selling all these things, um, then you want to protect uh, your trademark also in class 35 with all the retail services. So then you could um, tell other competitors not to use Marimba as a name for a shop for these kinds of goods. Um, so you get an idea. Um, you can look through all these classes and see if there, is, uh, some, if there are relevant goods and services in these classes for you. For example, if you want to protect your trademark for an app or for, for software, then you need protection in class 9. Then as the last um, piece of important information, you need the name of the applicant. Um, that sounds very uh, simple and typically it is. So you just need the company name and the company address. Um, but sometimes it's complicated because um, in my experience, um, a lot of company owners, they, in their signature of their emails, they write the company name in a different way as it is in the company register. Please use the writing as it is in the company register to um, make it easier later to enforce your trademark. Um, the, the information has to be really correct, so the correct street, the correct um, place, the correct company name, everything. And one other thing where it can get uh, complicated is if you don't have a registered company and you want to register the trademark in your own name, basically in your private person's name, um, then you need your private address. A lot of people use the company address, basically their office location, 
But um, that will uh, likely, at least in Germany, not be enforceable because that person doesn't exist at the, uh, for, for legal purposes, doesn't exist at the office location, but rather at the private address location. So that's one thing to consider. One other thing that you have to consider is that there can be earlier similar trademarks. So for example, if you want to um, register a trademark PMW for cars, and um, you go ahead and file the trademark, the, typically the trademark office, except for example the USPTO, um, most offices they don't really search for earlier similar trademarks, so it will be registered and you start producing cars under the name of PMW, and three years later BMW tells you to stop and then you come to me and I say, okay, it's very close, better maybe stop. So then you have to not only stop using the trademark, but also you have to uh, probably pay damages. Um, and that can be, for example, the revenue that you, um, the profit that you made of the cars uh, or um, a reasonable license fee. And um, then you also have to pay the attorney fees and so on. So it can be really uh, difficult if you don't uh, really make sure that your name is, um, is free to use. So before you file for a trademark or use a name for a product or a company, um, you should, uh, you don't have to, but you should uh, look whether there are similar earlier trademarks. And um, if you want to get a good overview how to do that um, for free basically, um, you can um, look at one of my other videos where I explain how to search for similar earlier trademarks. Of course, that search cannot be, uh, I cannot be held liable for that search. If you want um, an opinion from an attorney or from a patent attorney where that attorney is uh, liable for, then of course you have to um, ask me or my colleagues to uh, conduct that search and whatever I tell you, of course, I'm liable for. So, but, but if you want to uh, do the search by yourself, feel free. Uh, I made a video and I link in the, uh, there is a link in the show notes uh, for that video where I uh, explain in great detail how to conduct um, a search for similar earlier trademarks. So once you made sure that there is no conflicting earlier trademark, then you can actually file the trademark. And typically in past times you had to um, print out a form, fill the form in and then send it to the patent or trademark office. Um, and or fax it or something like this. Um, but nowadays most uh, patent and trademark offices um, offer um, web filing or at least electronic filing. Um, so you can just um, go to the website of the, of for example, the German Patent and Trademark Office or the USPTO or um, EU IPO or other offices and then you can uh, basically, you typically easily find the place where you can file the trademark online. And at that uh, form, you will see that you, at the filing form, you will see that you have to fill in these three pieces of information. That is at least the most important pieces of information, the sign, the goods and services, and the applicant. And then, of course, you have to pay. And most offices, they accept credit cards, but for example, the German Patent and Trademark Office just accepts uh, wiring for typical, like if you use the web form, of course we as a patent uh, law firm or, and we also handle about four and a half thousand uh, trademarks. We have an electronic uh, program on our computers and an electronic certificate where we can file directly and electronically so and we can pay directly. We don't, we have an account with the office and that's a little bit more convenient. But if you want to do that yourself, you can go ahead and use the web form. Um, most offices offer that. As it was true with uh, the search, uh, of course, there is no attorney to be uh, liable for anything you do by yourself. But um, so if you want to um, be more safe on the safe side, maybe uh, you should ask a patent attorney or an attorney at law that is experienced in, in trademarks to do the filing for you. Then once you file the trademark, uh, the procedure is a little different from office to office, but in general the office typically 
examines the trademark for formal deficiencies. So if you made any formal mistakes, let's say you forgot to fill out um, the form completely or you filled it out in the wrong way, then you get typically you get an um, office action asking for um, fixing the problem. And also the offices, they will um, examine the trademark for descriptiveness, basically. So you can get a trademark Apple for computers because Apple is not descriptive for computers. But what you can't get is a trademark Apple for fruits uh, because Apple is a fruit and that would be descriptive and uh, that cannot be monopolized basically. So um, you cannot really own the name Apple for fruits because then no one could use Apple for fruits. So um, the trademark office will examine all incoming trademarks for um, absolute grounds. That means descriptiveness basically. And once your trademark is registered, you can um, basically, first of all, that's the main purpose of the trademark. Ask your competitors not to use that sign for the protected goods and services. And also you can license out the trademark. So for example, if you have a trademark marimba for dance studios, then you can, and you are only located in a certain city and you want, um, and other dance studios in other cities want to use the name, then you can allow that for a certain license fee. And then you can make a license agreement um, and then you can earn money with that. So that's another way to monetize your trademark. So I hope this video was helpful. If you like this video and you're new to the channel and you want to learn more about patents, trademarks and designs in the future, subscribe to my channel. If you like the video, of course, hit like uh, at the video. If you have questions or comments, please um, post your questions and comments below this video. And most importantly, protect your intellectual property and go make it count.